the bad, let me put it in bracket, the bad um, sound engineers have used the concept of um, auto-tune auto -tune to deceive a lot of people. Auto-tune is a deception. It's a thief. It steals your confidence because rather than train your voice to sound the way you should sound, mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you, know, you are paying a computer to make you sound good. a lot of pressure on me ladies and gentlemen for this special episode of showbiz university reason why i'm saying that i'll tell you when it's lecture time but welcome to another episode of showbiz university my name has always been k-i-n-g Mensa, and every friday we bring you entertainment podcast we discuss everything entertainment we did theater we did camera works and videography last week but this week on lecture time we're bringing you a voice coach that explains why I'm nervous, because uh, if my voice cracks right now, I get into trouble. Aside speaking with the voice coach for lecture time, we'll be bringing you Just Corner, your Mind Day segment will be featuring us always, and I'll be bringing you my top 10 songs for the week, we call it Weekend Playlist. This is what we've compiled for episode 25 of Showbiz University. Welcome to my world. <laughs> It's time for lecture time, and my guest for today is none other person than Coach Freeman Amer. This very gentleman, or this very man, has worked on almost all the music reality shows in Ghana. Right from TV3 Mentor to CTFM's Voice Factory to MTN Hitmaker to the Vodafone Icons. He has worked with all the big names in the music industry you can mention, from Big Dragon, Efia, to the mountains inside, the lioness inside, the <laughs> mountains with Yala, to almighty to Baba, to Face, uh, to Waje, to Kidi, to Kwame Eugene, to music group Dark Sabeb. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> Mr. Freeman Ahmed is my guest for today on Lecture Time. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Oh, thank you very much. We can take like 30 minutes to read your profile. Oh, please don't read yeah, it. We can, like, we can take let's, like 30 let's, minutes. Of let's forget time. about them. But the reason why we brought you here today, we <clears throat> want to actually identify the importance, okay. the emphasis on the importance of voice coaching in the entertainment industry. And uh, maybe limit or restrict our conversation to music Okay. And those who use their voice more often, like myself yes. and the musicians. Okay. So first off, what is the role of a voice coach in the life of one, a musician, and in the life of someone who does talking for a living, like myself? A voice coach is pretty much your family doctor that mm. takes care of your vocal image. Now, when I say vocal image, um, I refer to how people hear you and decide to respond to you okay. based on the tone of your voice. How people hear you and decide to respond. People will judge you whether you like it or not. Okay. In part by how you sound. People will describe you based on how you sound. Right. So if I'm guessing, the deeper your voice, the more convincing you sound and welcoming. Those are the elementary stuff. Eh. That's the <laughs> elementary stuff. Okay. You know, that's the elementary stuff. The truth of the matter is every voice is unique in the sense that the way your larynx is developed is as, as a result of several factors, you know, where you grew up, the kind of environment, the kind mm -hmm. of sounds you heard growing up as a child, the kind of sounds you made as a child, the languages that you can speak and understand, the experiences you've had, your emotional um, experiences. They're all captured all in your voice. your voice. They, are all, they all show up in your voice Amazing. eventually. Amazing. Yes. So your voice is, is that one unique thing that, you know, it's different from everything else. And unfortunately, because we, we start using it early, mm -hmm. we get comfortable mm. with, yo, oh, but I've been this talking. This is how I sound. Yeah, so but, okay yeah but this is until you find yourself in a situation where 
you know, you get to hear yourself the way other people hear you. And many times people are shocked, say, ah, is that me? <laughs> ah, you know, we get that a lot in the studios with the uh, artists, you know, and that's why the, the bad, let me put it in bracket, the bad um, sound engineers have used the concept of um, auto-tune auto -tune to deceive a lot of people. Auto-tune is a deception. It's a thief. It steals your confidence because rather than train your voice to sound the way you should sound, mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you, know, you are paying a computer to make you sound good. Does that not make life of an artist easier? I mean, why should I really stress myself to train my voice when autotune can do the work for me good. and make because, me good money? Because your voice is as unique as your fingerprint. There are things, there are signatures in your voice mm. that nobody else can copy. The things that those computers do for you only makes you, makes you sound cheap and common. Have mm. you noticed that, yeah, anybody who uses autotune, they all sound the same. Except T-Pain. But they all sound the same. <laughs> uh -huh. Nine over ten of them sound the same. Okay. It's like pure water, but with different brand names. It's, it's still, still pure water. water. <laughs> okay. Good. If you really want to stand out, you have to work on your voice. And your, your, your confidence is actually connected to your vocal image. Wow. Have you ever met somebody seen somebody and they looked so good their visual image was so good but when they opened their mouth mm -hmm. you had summed them up until they spoke have you uh, have you also seen somebody else in the opposite way who didn't look so good but as soon as they started talking everyone listens thank you, they, yeah. you in fact it, you subconsciously begin to class them mm -hmm. you elevate them you say ah this person must be educated or exposed Oh, you understand? I, I normally would attribute those factors to maybe how their addiction is or how they speak, but not necessarily their voice. But now I am hearing that the voice plays a role. Diction, in that. enunciations, mm -hmm. articulations are all uh, children of tone. What is tone? Tone refers to the characteristics of your vocal sound. The character of your voice mm -hmm. is your tone. Now, tone is what allows you to sound either friendly or unfriendly. Okay. You know, harsh, you know, or calm. tough or calm or whatever, <laughs> gentle. And if you check, it's a subconscious thing. We always describe people based on that. When, whenever you hear them say, oh, that guy is gentle. Nine over ten of the time, mm -hmm. they haven't seen him acting gentle. He sounds gentle. So we just assume. Okay. This is why people are still getting conned till today. They, I tell people that because we are wired as human beings to, to sound of uh, ingenuity or genuineness mm -hmm. from our emotional part, we will always be conned. Anybody who sounds the part mm -hmm. can deceive you. Easily deceive you. Anytime they sound the part, they, you will be deceived. Right. So <laughs> this, this is going to be an interesting conversation, guys. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a podcast episode that you'd want to listen to <laughs> over and over again, because the kind of knowledge Mr. Freeman here is sharing, we should do a part two of this or maybe a part two and three. <laughs> Break it down because time would not be our friend here. here but let you. me ask you this. Yes. Working with all these musicians uh -huh. from Two Face Edibia to Wiala to a fair kiddie, all have different kinds of uh, voices mm -hmm. and how warm or how uh, cold their voice sound. Mm -hmm. Texture. Texture, voice texture, mm -hmm. great. But how do you manage to strike a balance so perfect that whatever that they sing comes out right to the ear? There, there are four parts of the voice. Mm -hmm. The first part is the ear. Your ear you said voice and you mentioned it. Ear. Yes. Okay. Your inner ear teaches your voice accuracy. Okay. So if now music history, in music history, you will hear a name called um, Beethoven. They yeah. consider Beethoven the greatest musician of 
his okay. era. I say, I say it as Beethoven. Okay, so, <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, okay. But then, why do you think they concluded that? Because Beethoven composed his finest symphonies mm -hmm. after he became deaf. Mm. So, as at that time, it was like, no, it's your ear that teaches you accuracy. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody can download so much fantastic accuracy from a deaf place, this, this, this is the greatest. So okay. your, your voice, your ear teaches your voice accuracy. So that's the first of four yeah. parts. So yes, first of four parts. Um, so in, in music, there's a, there's a program we call ear training. Mm -hmm. Your ear is a muscle that can zoom out and zoom in just like your eyes. But until you are trained, <laughs> you can't do that. You will know what to do. Okay. Then your throat and your, your diaphragm, larynx, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. That's the second part of your voice. The third part of your voice has to do with what we call resonance. Resonance. Can you care to explain that? Resonance is the part of sound that makes you see pictures when you listen. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> there are seven people when they start talking uh -huh. uh, which is what this thing is about it's all about what they hear true and they're not here with us they're not here with us but the as they're listening they see pictures so that's resonance yes okay. so so resonant points are all over the body and they are connected to the the accuracy of your frequency See, sound, sound is made up of vibrations, vibrations yeah. frequencies, mm -hmm. and energy. True. Now, the right vibration or right frequency gives the sound a certain shape. In fact, let me tell you a big deal. There's a, there's a science of sound called the science of visible sound. It's, it's existed since 1680. Mm -hmm. It's called cymatics. Okay. Which proves that every sound we make, literally every sound we make, has a shape and a form. Now, if the shape is accurate, if the vibration is right, mm -hmm. it travels through resonance. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes somebody sound believable. Mm. If it is not right... That's where, especially if, if someone is singing, you say, oh, they're singing off. Sometimes you can't pinpoint, you say, oh, but something doesn't wrong. sound right. To yeah, it just so doesn't sound right. Although you might not be well-versed in music knowledge or anything, you go. it still sounds exactly. off to you. Exactly. Because the, their sound is not right. Exactly. Okay, okay. That explains, that explains a know. lot. That explains a lot. So can we discuss the role of people like you, voice coaches, and how it goes beyond singing, but training all these voices. The reason why I'm saying that is, you, you mentioned your ear and your throats, larynx and all that, the yeah, resonance. And your and breathing, that. yes. But most often, as you said earlier, you start speaking when you were a child and you don't get the opportunity to train your voice in whichever form until maybe you are a singer or you're... You, you are find forced yourself. to use your voice in open spaces or to make money yes. with it. People grow up getting used to the voice they started as a kid. True, with. true. And they see nothing wrong with it. Yes. But as a voice coach, you might hear someone's voice and be like, nah, you need a lot of training, although you just talk. So how, how do people like you work this out? Now, now it, it becomes important. I like to use the concept of um, football. Mm -hmm to explain this because it's so much easier. Now, every footballer was first discovered as a talent. True. You know? Now, as soon as the talent agent finds you, it's not that you can't play, you already have this, you know? But they take you through the football academy. Mm -hmm. What do you learn in the football academy? How to control your Skill Ball skills and everything, and but that. most importantly, how to make sure that your talent mm -hmm. blends with other talents, how okay. to work with other people. 
you know it doesn't matter how how talented a footballer is why do you think they put them under a coach the coach keeps you disciplined mm -hmm. holds you accountable and helps you to monitor your progress mm. if Lionel Messi decided that he wanted to dribble from one end of the post to the other he could yeah, he and he can do it several times but how many times do you think he would do it before somebody jumps on him and breaks his leg and then that's the end mm -hmm. so what's the, the the function of a coach we're there to maintain to help you discover uncover discover and grow what you have because this same voice mm -hmm. that you are uh, we are playing around Somebody just said, oh, how many? 20 years ago, somebody said three words. This is CNN. Mm -hmm. And they gave him a million dollars. <laughs> Eddie Murphy used his voice for Shrek. Shrek 2, sure. 20 million dollars. Mm. So where's the value? So I usually ask people, what's the emotional value of your voice? What's the technical value of your voice? How do you know the power of your voice? Can you, can you speak in such a way that somebody who was planning to go kill somebody changed their mind? Right. Can you sing to save a life? I can't even sing to sing, to save my own life. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, the, these are the purposes why you have people like us. Where are your... Whenever you are looking for, for, like, for a lawyer, mm -hmm. even if he spends four years studying law in the university, you're right. You have to go through law school sure. to be accredited. Okay. Now, because the uh, the the entertainment sector doesn't have these structures in place, that's why it looks like ah, uh, you know. But anybody who's somebody in the industry, anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. trust me, they're being coached. Oprah Winfrey has a voice coach. Obama has a voice coach. Um, all the talk show hosts that you know, not just the singers, the actors have vo vocal coaches. Because how do you play the new characters? How do we believe? We've been seeing your face. Mm -hmm. how so do how do you embody a different character good. and make us not see maybe a Morgan Freeman, but a different character? Thank you. That's the job of a voice coach. It helps you to discover this, you know, these things mm. and then help channel you in the right direction. Right. That's that's what then I think voice coaching goes beyond just singing and talking because one of the major problems or one of the major reasons why I do not like watching Ghanaian movies most times is I cannot differentiate between the personality and the character of the person. I rest my case. <laughs> Good. We call it, um, uh, what am I? There's a, a program okay. that, you know, the, that I, I run. I call it vocal archetypes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you see, if the character of the on screen doesn't match the tone, it, it sends very wrong mixed signals to you. Mm -hmm. And people can pick on these things. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need professionals in the field who can say, okay, okay, so what role are you playing? What character are you playing? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear. Let's find the tone. Nah, this tone doesn't work. Let's look for something else. And you see, the vocal cords are such a dynamic instrument that it can, it can mimic an array. It can produce an array of emotional tones. Mm. You just need to go through to find it. To write. This is an interesting conversation, guys. I wish this can go on and on and on. But why do we have to train our voice? Besides everything that you've mentioned so far, why do we have to train our voice? And picture this question to the layman that does not use his or her voice to sing or talk in public yes. or anything. Why they, do you think the person needs to train his or her voice? One of the most important reasons why you need to train your voice is to be able to discover how believable you can sound. Mm. How believable are you? We've had, you know, nice, innocent people, good people lose election because they were not believable to us and criminals win elections. 
And it's all based on the voice. Yes, well, people have gone, nice, good people have gone for interviews and lost it because they were not believable. They were not convincing enough. Thank you. They didn't know how to use their voice. The vocal image is more powerful than your visual image. Because it, the, it's your vocal image that people use to decide if they can be with you, if they can work with you, if they will, if they want you. Mm. So why are you not trying to figure out what kind of voice you have? Especially because it's as unique as your fingerprint. At least try something. Hmm. Uh, the uh, reason why I'm quiet is a lot of thoughts are running through my head right now. When you say your vocal image is more important than your visual image, how you look is less important than no, how yeah, you sound. Yeah, and they've told us that thing for a long time. But every time you check, Go back and check. Doesn't matter how fantastic somebody looks, as soon as they start talking, that is the determining factor of whether you think they are special or not. Mm. As soon as they open their mouth, then you know, you, you decide, oh, wow. Then I really need to take my vocal training serious, man. You do. I really, if I, he's, he's nodding there. <laughs> <laughs> Something Julia is nodding right now. No, but because it's true. You, see, I, I, I had people who would come to me from, you know, who had been told in the choir that oh, this is the kind of voice you have. And then I take them through a series of vocal testings mm -hmm. and diagnosis, and they are shocked. So I have people who came to me to learn how to sing, but they are now on TV and on radio because they discovered other abilities. You do diagnostics all for the voice. Yeah, but Charlie, it's the voice. Oh, wow. It's like a vocal hospital. Come, yeah. come get treated by so, Dr. Freeman. So, so, yeah, but that's it. So people realize that, oh, wow, so I can do this. Mm. Someone who cannot, or I mean anyone at all, listening to Showbiz University this episode, oh. that wants to train his or her voice, but may not have access to you. Mm. Let's, let's go through maybe two or three basic training the person can do even whilst lying in the house. The person does not need to do much but start something before finding Dr. Freeman. Um, you have to figure out how to breathe. Okay. Breath, uh, and, um, breath determines the uh, quality of your voice. Good breathing leads to good speaking. Okay. So I have this simple number thing I get. I use the number one to eight. Okay. You know. And I... I We're going to try it right now. Yes. I'm going to try it. Yeah, so... Let's find ourselves a tempo, a simple tempo. So you could just snap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if you check, the, I started creating a pattern mm -hmm. where I take my breath and when I have to, when I finish using it, where? So, the, so when, when you breathe in, good. you count to eight. You, you, breathe you use your breath. Okay. It's called the breath support technique. Don't make any sound without breath supporting it. Mm. See, it's, it, it's one thing for me to say. It's just like anything more serious. It's like you can't tell a, a a, a doctor say, oh, show us how you do this uh, mm. operation. Mm -hmm. Now, nah, you have to go. <laughs> right. Come to this. this come thing. to the studio. Come, come at least come and go, come have one of the diagnostic se sessions. Okay. Where we take you through because what you really need, what everybody needs, whether you sing or talk, is to create, we, we will build you what we call a vocal register. A vocal register simply means a voice that has a low a mid and, and a high, okay. or a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you knowing where your beginning is, where your middle is, and where your end is. Okay, so you don't stretch your voice Thank past you. your you end. Thank you, just control, okay. yeah. And if you decide that you are crossing over the end, you will know how to cross over the end. Safe. Many, good. Mm -hmm. Many people, as we call it, we call it very poor vocal techniques, they force. Instead of allow their voice to change registers, they force through. So soon enough, it has this rasp, mm -hmm. and it, it, 
There, there's rasp that is fantastic, but there's rasp that is horrible. <laughs> that that's leading like you. A growling, no, uh, yes, <laughs> it's leading to vocal challenges and vocal health problems in the future. You mm. only have one voice, supposed to last you a lifetime. Mm. Some of us are not yet married. You will need a particular range of voice to deal with your children at several stages of their life. You, really? You have no idea. Even how to raise kids, you need I'm, voice need, range? Yes, because, because the children, go, they get to a point where they test the boundaries. And it is your tone that determines whether they, are, whether they should try it mm. or not. In Africa, we all have one voice. Hey! <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but, but how long do you need to do that? If, you, if that's all you have, you don't have a range of emotional expressions, then you are limited. No, it's all bottled in that hair. Yeah, but then, <laughs> but then it hasn't worked as, as efficiently as it should because we're having all these crappy <laughs> problems. So you need to find out how to use your voice to influence your children. You have to find out how to use your voice to influence your spouse. You have to find out how to use your voice to influence your neighbors, your parents. Is that not manipulation? That's not manipulation. That is knowing what to do and how to do it. See, I always tell people, when people come to me, I say, oh, I have a good voice. I want to sing. I say, that's not enough. Being a good singer has nothing to do with having a good voice. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I know people who have very bad voice, but they can sing good. They have hit songs and there you they're you go. Selling millions so of what records. makes you a good singer is not having a good voice. Or I'm not talking good. about David Doe, by the way. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> What makes you a good singer is knowing what to do, how to use your voice to do it, mm -hmm. and doing it. Mm. What's going to make you a great presenter on radio is knowing the kind of voice you have and what you can do with it. What's going to make you a, a loving, to, to be considered a loving husband is knowing how to use your sound when you need it. Wow. Wow. I mean, <laughs> you, you can be Superman right now if you can control your voice. <laughs> no, but that's it. If any, everybody who can control their voice enjoy a level of, of, um, of immunity. Because you can weave your way through almost Literally, everything. They, they go, why do you think we, we fall in love with people who know how to use their voice, whether they are in the movies or on stage. Wow. Dr. Freeman, before we let you go, uh, <laughs> our time is, our time is far, <laughs> far, far, far spring. But this is just like scratching the surface of this oh, yes. conversation. I'm telling you, we have not been gone anywhere. There, there are lots I, I would want us to, maybe in the future, talk about mm. how deep uh, like the types of voices yeah, we have. Yeah, well, we have different types of voices. Mm -hmm. We have dynamic voices, we have we have tonal voices, we have um emotional voices. You see, when you know the kind of voice you have, mm -hmm. you're like that, like you're like halfway done. Okay. Exactly. I have this kind of voice. Then how do I use it in such a way? You have an emotional voice, but you want to be a radio presenter. You make people cry. Thank you. You so, should do even issues. Good. <laughs> so it, it, that knowledge changes everything. It gives you perspective rather than feel like, because when you go and they're like, nah, this voice is not good for morning show. For morning show. show you know, no, no. Meanwhile, you want to do morning show, but you can learn techniques, vocal techniques mm -hmm. that can help you use that voice. Because you see, naturally, our voices are tuned to our emotional state. If you're happy, you sound happy. True. If you're not, you try to sound happy. But anybody paying attention to details... You know you're lying. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But when you learn what kind of voice you have and you, got, you gain mastery over it through techniques, mm -hmm. you can go to your happy tone, your serious tone, your official tone, Anytime. Even just when like you that. don't need it. You don't, just you don't the, need the, the emotional in state. In the spell of the moment, Good. you need that tone. So you just access it Boom. anytime. Wow. I'm, I'm very excited I'm speaking to you right now. So, I feel like you can change my life in the moment. No, but your, your <laughs> life is connected to your voice. Literally. Uh -huh. No, why do, we, why do we believe newscasters? 
Have you ever wondered? Because and that's the elementary own. training. Mm -hmm. But we believe them. Every news they cast, we believe them. Why do you think? Hmm. Question for the gods, guys. <laughs> Question for the girls. Dr. Freeman, where do we find you? How do we find you? Oh, I mean, I cry here. I mean, it's Legon. Uh, oh, okay. The, the mere fact that you're mentioning it's Legon means we're paying dollars. <laughs> to come and see you. This is just wrong. <laughs> you guys don't do this. <laughs> right. So, if someone needs your services, do, mm -hmm. do you offer like remote services? By remote, I mean online services or it's just in person? services that you run. I love the in-person thing because it's easier to be able to find the problems because the challenges are many. You Sometimes some people sound really good until you push them to a particular range then you begin to hear things. Mm. You know, so the in-person thing is the best. However, I do the online thing. I have students in America in the UK and everything. Mm. But recently I've been having challenges with our network. Uh, everyone has, actually. So, so that's only the only challenge, and sometimes it can be really frustrating, mm -hmm. you know. But of course, yes, I do, I do. Right. I do so, like would it. you love to put your number out there, or people will come and disturb you? So you put your social media. Out no, there. no, no. I, I, I have a number already out there, so oh, I can okay. give that number. Out. Okay. Yes. Right. So the name on social media and the number. Okay. So we find you. Yeah, at Coach Freeman. Coach Freeman. Okay. Yes. Any time you're looking for, if you type in Coach Freeman. You should be able to find me. Mm -hmm. My numbers will be 0264 4969 Right. Thank you so much once again, sir, for speaking to us at Showbiz <laughs> University. Thank you so much. I have learned a lot. First thing that I'm going to practice is my breath control. Yes, breath control. I, I, I'll work on that, then I'll contact you. Then see if I can pay the Islegon kind no, of. No, don't worry. <laughs> One of the things I've done, and it's, 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 I'm just copywriting it now. I've created different audiovisual materials mm -hmm. to help with all these levels of training. So right. I'm just waiting for the copyright to be done, and then I'll release it. So okay. you guys can find all that stuff online. Right. So that, that will be much easier yes. for, for those who cannot come in person because oh, yeah, of no. work schedules yes. and all I have a I have a, a whole program coming up where an online school, an online program, vocal training program coming. But we needed, to, because we created completely new stuff that don't exist, so mm -hmm. we, need, we need to copyright. Mm. Yes. Guys, I got myself a new voice coach. <laughs> Goes by the name Dr. Freeman. I'll be going for uh, hospital treatment very soon. In the next few episodes of Showbiz University, you'll be hearing different tones mm -hmm. of... K I N G and you say be wondering, ah, where is King? Where is King? That yeah. old King is dead. Yeah. Uh, the new King is up. <laughs> is Doctor, thank you so much so much. So much so much, Bless so much, Bless so much for Bless coming. Thank you. Thank you. So Samson is here to bring us three headlines in the entertainment industry. Hey there guys, you're welcome to Just Corner on Showbiz University. My name is Senasin and I'm bringing you three trending topics in the world of social media. So last Saturday, Davido had his away concert in America, in Atlanta, and he had King Promise and Chrisiatha come perform. King Promise gave a beautiful performance, that, like his performance was top, top, just as expected. But Quisiata's performance has actually sparked a lot of conversation on social media. So when you watch, a lot of us couldn't attend. I don't think a lot of Ghanaians from here moved there. So we all just watched the feed we got on social media. And when you watch the performance, you could see that Quisiata's performance was a bit off. He, he had almost no contact with the audience because they weren't responding to his songs. It looked like he was just performing like he was just performing to them like they weren't minding him and all that and people are like no this 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 is not it this is not the quisiata that we know like everything about his performance was not what we are used to so people on twitter especially x especially were talking a lot and quisiata didn't seem happy with the comments so he came to tweet and said i've seen your comment even if there were two people in the arena i would still have performed i need you to show your opinions up your ass so he's just trying to tell you he knows that that means he himself even knows that i don't know but if there were only two people there he would still have performed well 
this generated another conversation with somebody replying him and he going into the person's dm and all of that and there's conversation about his mental health and people claiming he's depressed which i don't think is the case but there's something off about this strategy he used to respond to what people will call criticism so i'm just hoping that he's okay i mean we have info that he's cool there's nothing happening but i just hope that he's fine and then he's able to re-strategize properly and come back as hard as he's supposed to well because the other thing promise weren't the only ones who performed last saturday who were invited to perform last saturday stoneboy did as well stoneboy was in london at the albert hall so angeli kijo one of the africans one of africa's greatest musicians ever celebrated her 40 years anniversary in the music industry she had a lot of legendary musicians come to perform and she gave stoneboy the opportunity to perform as well i think it was just right because stoneboy has her on his fifth dimension album which is the last song on his album titled manoji he featured angelikijo on that song and he performed that song on the stage and it was beautiful audience reception was wow stoneboy had control and everything like it's stoneboy he you know how he does it so yes yeah, stoneboy did his thing on saturday as well congratulations to him now to my last story for just corner shatawali shatawali took to his facebook to leave what i what i would call a very passionate message to the industry i don't know what motivated him to use this strategy because i we don't really know shata to be the type who writes a lot he's the type who likes to voice out his opinions just as plainly as he can but this time he took to his facebook to write something something interesting and i would want to read the whole post here so he says thinking aloud on a tuesday afternoon i write this with deep concern about the challenges that have prevented major global music industries from investing and partnering with our beloved industry in ghana it is clear that the lack of conducive policies infrastructure and resources have hindered our growth and potential on the international stage we must urgently address this by improving regulatory frameworks, investing in modern infrastructure, and strengthening intellectual property rights and licensing. It's time for us to work together to create an enabling environment that attracts major global investment and propels our music industry to unprecedented heights, contributing to our national identity and economy. Beautifully written. I don't know why people would doubt who people would question who wrote it or not, but it was Shatawali that posted it. And for me, I feel like this is not the kind of this is not the shatter we know. This was so some way for me, but then the message is clear simple like the english is a lot but the message is simple we need to invest in infrastructure that is the only way we will get people to see us and want to work with us so if we are not trying to move forward that's basically what he's saying we should take a step forward we should try to improve that is the only way people will also see us to help us and i hope that he's not just saying it and he's actually going to start it and set the blueprint for his colleagues to follow that's why i leave you for this corner my name is Senasin. I'll catch you next week on the next episode of Showbiz University. Keep listening. So that was Senna Sin with Gist Corner. I was excited to watch Stoneboy perform with multiple Grammy winning African musician, Angelique Kujo. Moving on to the next segment, your mind day is up next. I mean, the worldly people, I'll never rise and lose it. We are with the guy. Something is wrong with you. On your mind day for today, I am asking you, of all the cities in the world, including your hometown, if you could only live in one city for the rest of your life, which city would you choose? Yes, of all the cities in the world, if you could only live in one city for the rest of your life, which city would you choose? Now, let me let me, let me me just take it out on a lot of people where eh? most of you would actually spend your whole life in one city and not move out yes so we'll just mention that city use the hashtag showbiz university or showbiz uni and i'll find your comments and read it next time. On my weekend playlist for today, Papi Kojo has released a new EP titled Kanewu. Off that EP, I want you guys to go listen to Papi Kojo featuring Darko Vibes, song they titled Samba. Samba. Uh, I 
Kwamina MP has gone to contract the services of Medical, and you know when Kwamina and Medical team up on an MOG beat, it's crazy. Title of the song: Dance. Certified Christmas banger. has released a new song title of the song tonight and anaji a lot of things will be going down in your talks kabudo Episode has a new banger out. Title of the song Asantewa. If you love episode not doing dance or and uh, experimenting on other genres, then you should love Asantewa from episode. <laughs> Pebby has featured Sina Soul and LaRusso on a new song title of the song Body Medicine. Do, do, do you go fly with your body medicine? I go you make it in a scene. Now will you party in a scene? Now will you tell me have you seen now? I'll be your body medicine. I go you make it in a scene. Now will you party in a scene? Now will you tell me have you seen Give me the body medicine. Tonight we are fishing. Aquabua organized the Lighthouse EP listening a few days ago. And the project or the body of work is officially out. You should go listen to the whole Lighthouse project. But of that project, I want you guys to go listen to another feature of Aquabua and Sakodie. Title of the song, A Citri. Moving straight into Nigeria, Vic Tony is towing the line of almost all Nigerian acts. When I say that, I mean they using Ghanaian slangs in their music and all that. But Vic Tony did it in a different way. So he has a new song titled Ohema and it features Crayon, Bella Smurda and Rema Irasta, Odumodu Black and all the big cats in Nigeria. Ohema, Vic Tony starts our Nigerian train. <laughs> Still in Nigeria, Young John the Wicked producer has a new song out, title of the song Go Hard. Slade has released two songs. First song is doing well. Second song, I want you guys to go listen to it. Title of the song, Piano, and it features P Prime. <laughs> Last on my weekend playlist, number 10 on my weekend playlist is Lo J and it features Olamide on a song titled Arizona. Nobody 
they gotta stop a huku. I'm a bruku. You do me kudu kudu, make a nigga kuku. So that's all we have for you on the weekend playlist for today. And that's all we have for you on Showbiz University for this episode. My name is KING Kwekumensa. We had a great conversation with Mr. Freeman. You should listen to it over and over again and hit him up for some voice coaching. Until then, we meet in another episode. Good vibes and positive energy going out to you.